Hi there, it's Craig here, and welcome back to another easy home brewing video. Today I'm going to be brewing a Irish Stout from Cooper's, and I've brewed this before and it was fantastic. Now, this is home brewing from kit. It's not home brewing from grains from scratch like some people do. This is a much easier way to do it, and you can get really good quality beer this way. Now, I could just jump right in and show you how to do this, but I really want to start from the beginning because some people might find this video before they find any of my other videos, and if I just put the needle down in the middle of the record, they're not going to hear the beginning of the story. So I want to go back to the beginning and talk about making beer and fermentation and how it works. Because today I'm not just going to use sugar, I'm going to use something else. I've done uh, videos on making beer uh, with honey. I've done videos on making wine, and I've done videos on making uh, wine out of store-bought juice, which is really easy to do. Uh, so if you want to go to my channel, it's CraigTube, look up those other videos. There's lots of brewing information on there. All right, let's jump in. No normally when you brew beer or anything, the key ingredient when you're brewing is sugar. Sugar is what turns into alcohol when you add your yeast. All the uh, beer kits and wine kits come with a little package of yeast, which I've left upstairs. <laughs> it's just a little envelope that comes in the lid. And um, what happens is there's sugar in here. This is malt extract. This, this is the stuff that makes beer, okay? And it's a very sugary substance, all right? And then normally what you would do, you put that in your fermenter, which I have here, with water. And normally what you would do is add some more sugar to it. This is actually corn sugar, uh, and I would recommend using corn sugar because it won't impart any strange flavors to your beer like table, sh table sugar might. So with all this sugar, and of course the ingredients that make the beer, then what you do is you add your yeast. And what the yeast does is it, it's, a, it's a living organism, and what it does is it eats the sugar. That's what it likes to do. It multiplies, eats all the sugar, and when it does that, it creates carbon dioxide and alcohol. Now, of course, the alcohol stays in the beer, and the carbon dioxide escapes through this little thing here called an airlock. Okay? This keeps all the air from outside from getting in, but it lets the carbon dioxide out. It's like a one-way valve. Okay? That's what fermentation is. And uh, the more sugar you add to your batch, the more alcohol you're going to have, to a certain point where if you add too much, you're going to offset the body of the beer, make it thin, and it's not going to have good head retention. So. I'll go over, you know, what you need to think about when you're adding this. Normally what I do is I, to every can of malt extract, I add one kilogram of, of this sugar. And that gets me about 5% alcohol. Um, alternately, you could use two cans of this and cut that down to um, very, almost no sugar at all. Um, or you could use what I'm going to use today, which is this is dry malt extract. And why would you want to do that? Well, when you're adding sugar to your, your brew to boost your alcohol, that's all you're doing. You're not doing any flavoring or anything else. The sugar is just acting towards increasing the alcohol content of your brew. But it's not doing anything else, it's not adding any flavor. So by adding two cans of this stuff, you're, all, you're increasing the sugar volume but you're also increasing the flavor because you're, you're getting all the, the, the hops and the, the barley and the malt, all the stuff that's in here. You're doubling up on that and getting double the flavor as well as increasing the alcohol. So you may as well kill two birds with one stone when you're boosting your alcohol. You may as well use a substance that's going to uh, uh, boost the alcohol as well as increase the flavor, like I did the batch uh, with honey. Not only did the honey boost the alcohol a little bit, but it also added a flavor to the beer. So that's why today I'm going to brew an Irish stout, and this actually calls for 500 grams of dry malt extract. The dry malt extract replaces the sugar and it does taste much better. So something to consider when you're making your beer. If you can't find it or you don't want to use it, don't bother. I don't use it every time I brew, I just do it as a treat once in a while, because it does make it taste nice. Okay. Now we're going to get started here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sanitize my equipment. I have a sanitizing video on my channel if you want to look that up. It shows you how to sanitize your stuff. It's very important to do that. And once I do that, we're going to get started making the beer. Okay, so I've sanitized everything 
and you can watch that video on my channel, how to sanitize. Uh, my sanitizer does require, it does require me to rinse the equipment after I use the sanitizer, so I rinse it with hot, hot water. And don't worry about using water to rinse your sanitized equipment because it's the same water that you're going to use to make your beer. So it's not going to contaminate anything. It's fine. All right. If your water is good enough to drink, it's good enough to make beer. Okay, let's go. What I've got here is I've got my fermenter, which I'm going to take off the lid. Just remove the airlock here and put them over here. It's all sanitized, so we don't have a problem. Grab my can of malt extract and a clean can opener. And open her up. So this is heated up. It's quite warm actually. It's very warm to the touch, almost too hot to touch. It's going to make it pour a lot easier. And it's a stout, so it's black. It looks like looks like tar. <laughs> so we'll pour this in. Pour this into our fermenter. Okay. And there'll always be some left inside the can. You can see that. So we're going to pour boiled water into the can. to help get the rest of the uh, stuff out of the can. So we'll grab our spoon, which is quite laden with malt extract, but that's fine. Stir that up. Now that's hot. <laughs> Just So I've got some gloves over there that I'm going to use to uh, lift this up and pour it. And so boiled water into here, give it a good stir around, get it all off the sides all off the bottom. What you have to remember is that this stuff is very, very concentrated. So any, every little bit that you don't get into your beer makes a bit of a difference. Grab my protective gloves here because it's hot. And I'm going to pour that into our fermenter. So we've got that in there. Now we've got our gallon or so. Actually, what I'll do now is I'll put my sugar in. Now this is this is 500 grams of dextrose of corn sugar. Normally I would put one kilogram in, but because I'm using the dry malt extract as an additive, I won't need as much sugar. This is going to help. It's going to do the same thing as a sugar does. It's going to ferment into alcohol, but it's also going to add some flavor to this. Okay. You don't have to use it, but if you do, it, it's, it's great. It adds a great, a great flavor. Okay. So 500, kilogr 500 grams of sugar. Okay. So, so far we've put our can of malt extract in, rinsed it with hot water, and 500 grams of, of corn sugar. Okay, now we're going to pour in about a gallon, maybe not quite a gallon, but of hot or of boiled water. Just enough so that we can get everything dissolved in here. Okay. Because that's a very thick syrup. And we want to dissolve all the sugars and all the syrups you know, the syrupy stuff to make sure that it's all properly dissolved. So I'm going to stir this for about a minute, I guess. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to add our dry malt extract. So I'm going to pour it in slowly as I stir. Whoops, a little bit on my hand there. So just carefully and slowly 
so it doesn't clump up. It's a little bit like flour. It'll clump up on you if you're not careful. Looks like I'm going to have to use a little bit of uh, warm water just to rinse and get that off. Get that off the spoon there. I won't worry about what's on my hand. The spoon is sanitized, so that's fun. So there we go. We've got what's called our wort. Now this is a hot, hot wort. Stir it for a little while, and then what I'm going to do is add cold water to this until it comes up to the five gallon, five imperial gallon mark in the fermenter. The cold water will bring this down to a temperature that is suitable for, for brewing, uh, somewhere between 70 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm just looking at this and I've got quite a bit of hot wort here. And this is important for you guys to, to get, okay? If I add cold water to this to fill it up to the five gallon mark, it's probably not going to be cool enough to add the yeast. If you add your yeast when it's, you know, above 90 degrees Celsius, Fahrenheit, you're going to kill your yeast. And I don't recommend brewing much above 80, really. Um, you can, but it's best if you keep it between 70 and 80 Fahrenheit. So what I'm going to do, I've got it in a sink here in a laundry sink, which I've bleached, by the way, before I did this video to make sure everything was clean, is I'm going to fill the sink with cold water to help cool off the wart so that when I add my cold water, I'll get a, you know, I'll get a, be a better temperature, I'll get a lower temperature. Okay. So I've got the sink filled with uh, cold water to cover the uh, level of this hot malt extract, this hot uh, wart here. I'm just going to stir it for a little bit to get it cooled down. So that when I add my cold water, I can achieve a temperature of somewhere around 75 degrees. Now on the side of my fermenter, you can't see it at the moment, but I have a little stick-on thermometer. I don't know if you can see this one here. I don't know whether that's the camera can pick that up, but it's a little strip and you stick it on the side of your fermenter and it tells you the temperature of the uh, contents. Alternately, you can get a glass thermometer that you can pop in there and check the temperature before you pitch your yeast. As you're filling it with water, you're filling it with cold water, when you get about 30, three quarters of the way up, you want to um, check it, make sure that it's within the range of 70 or 80, and if it isn't, you want to adjust the hot and the cold water accordingly to make sure that when it's full, it ends up at somewhere in that range. Okay, so I've uh, I've cooled my beer, my wort down a little bit. So basically, what I do is I cool it down until there's no more steam coming off. Uh, it's still quite warm, but it's uh, no steam's coming off. Now we're going to add the cold water to bring it up to five gallons and bring it down to, to proper temperature. I've also moved it onto the platform where I'm actually going to brew it because once it's full, it's quite heavy. So. Let's put that up there. Let's get the cold water in. I sanitized my hose as well. This is an old thing I've been using for years. And I did sanitize the inside of this hose by running some sanitizer through it. Anything that touches your beer should be sanitized. got to end up with a temperature between 70 and 80 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So just judge it. And you can practice this with just water. Uh, just doing it with hot water at the bottom and then filling it with cold. See how you can, how good are you at getting it at temperature. Alright, there we go. That's that. So whatever temperature we ended up with here, is what we've got to work with. And if it's a little bit above 80, it's not going to hurt nothing. I mean, you know, it's fine. But if you get towards 90, I would 
really not want you to do that um, because the flavors are changing. The yeast, when it ferments at that temperature, will ferment differently. When the yeast reacts slowly, um, it does a better job at fermenting and it, the beer will taste better. So, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of beer out of here. I'm just going to place the lid on there loosely. Just protect it. I'm going to take a little bit out and I'm going to do a test with my hydrometer. Now a hydrometer is something that you should have. It's a very handy thing. You should learn how to use it. And I have a hydrometer video on my YouTube channel. It tells you all about them and how to use them. Very handy thing to do. And what I'm going to do is check to see how much alcohol I'm going to get. Because if I'm not going to get as much alcohol as I want, I'm going to add more sugar. Okay, so I ended up with a reading of about 1.040, which is, for me, perfect. You're going to get about 5% about alcohol in this. Uh, and the, the hydrometer tells you this. It tells you what potential alcohol you're going to end up with. It gives you your readings. It's great. Um, they got these new color-coded ones out now that are perfect. So as long as it's within that little, um, little, little yellow area there, you're fine. But I like a little more alcohol. Uh, so 0 1.040 is perfect. Now it's time to add the yeast. So this is your little packet of yeast that came with the kit. And this is what's going to do the magic. Sprinkle it on. Now I'm going to stir this, so I'm not too worried about how even it is. All right. So you get it all. And I'm going to give it a good stir. Some people don't stir their wort after they put their yeast in. I don't think it matters. Um, the reason I do it is because it speeds up the... Uh, process of the yeast multiplying and getting going. All right, there, perfect. I just screw it on the lid or snap on the lid, whichever fermenter you've got. And half full of water, snap on the lid, and what I do is I press down and check for a good seal. So and you can watch that in my airlock video, how to make sure you've got a good seal, and I do. Okay, so there you have it. We just made beer. <clears throat> this is going to ferment for about a week. This thing's going to bubble. If it doesn't bubble, or it doesn't bubble as fast as you think it should, watch my airlock video. There are some things that can happen. It doesn't mean your beer is not fermenting. Okay? It's probably 99% this is going to work. It's not something you need to worry about. This is not a complicated process. It happens to fruit every day. You leave fruit out, it ferments. Stuff ferments every day. So this will work. It's not a big deal. Okay? Uh, check out my CraigTube channel for all my other brewing videos. I've got lots of stuff up there on, on home brewing. I have a bottling video on my channel. There's a four part series on home brewing I did a couple years ago and the part four is actually when I bottle my, uh, my beer. So you can watch that. Uh, it's all there. So thanks again. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Take care. Hi there, it's Craig here, and we're, uh, ah, <clears throat> send me a message, I'll cheer out of help the best I can. Again, check out the other brewing, <clears throat> um, I want to cover uh, today uh, how to do a, oh shit.